All right, so what I'm about to embark upon is watching part of an episode or a full episode of the Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh show, who's a part of the Daily Wire. And I'm doing this to see what the news might be like that someone else is watching. And then people can also see what I do when I'm watching news, whether it's my side's news, which I don't really have, um, or their side's news. Pretty much any time I get news, I'll look it up. I'll look up what they're saying. I look at for sources. I look for information. His uh, article page doesn't have a lot of sources on it, so I have to do a bunch of searches. Um, that's going to be basically what I do through these. Um, I do the same thing with YouTube videos, documentaries, that sort of stuff. So anyways, without further ado, here's the video. I'll show Hillary Clinton takes a page from primitive tribal shamans by blaming the weather on her political opponents. We've gotten used to this kind of super. So I just want to stop here really quickly. So he's using this title, the Democrats take a page from primitive tribal shamans to both give something that he knows will sort of try and trigger particular people that he's opposed to or that his group is opposed to, right? The people he's marketing against, as it were. And he's giving keywords uh, for folks that are on his side or who are watching the show and think that he's more than just ridiculous. Um, it's a sales tactic. And oftentimes you could reference this like natural language programming or like what Apple uses in advertising the iPad is magical, beautiful keyboard, right? So people repeat those words. I suspect he wants people to go around being like, you're primitive, you know, whatever. So blaming the weather, we know that. We know some other stuff from the title. Okay, let's go. Superstitious thinking from the left, and it's only getting more deranged as time goes on. Also, historic UFO hearings in D.C. This is fascinating stuff, and if you don't find it fascinating, then you're wrong. And Mitch I like the fact that he just says, hey, you're wrong, because, quite frankly, he's probably in that camp. McConnell has some kind of health episode during a press conference. This is happening more and more often since our country is being led by dinosaurs. And our daily cancellation, a tribute to a brave Democratic politician who protested a non-existent law with a hunger strike that lasted many, many, many minutes. We'll talk about that and much more today on The Matt Walsh Show. Over the last century, archaeologists in China uncovered tens of thousands of ancient oracle bones, which are the bones of animals that carry some kind of inscription. The discoveries prove that during the Shang Dynasty in ancient China, humans and animals were often sacrificed in order to change the weather. One is, is that actually true? That sounds really cool, actually. Wait, Trevor Fossils and China? Oh, tons of species. Uh, Oracle bones, here you go. What are Oracle Bones by the BBC? They were discovered over 100 years ago. Oracle Bones like this one are about 3,500 years old. Shang Dynasty, I was misspelling it, that makes sense. Bones tell stories about the Shang Dynasty's rulers, the weather, warfare, agriculture, births, and deaths. Okay, what's this? Ah, okay, so the diviners would ask questions of the gods, then they would dig things into the bones to say what was going to happen. Got it. Okay, so far. Good to go. Description on an oracle bone read simply, Should a man be burnt at the stakes? Will rain follow? 
Most of these victims, anthropologists noted, were slaves, prisoners of war, beggars, cripples. The Chinese believed that by killing off these undesirables, they'd cause it to rain. And in that sense, the ancient Chinese had a lot in common with uh, many other uh, ancient cultures, including the Aztecs, who fought wars to secure new victims for their human sacrifices. And those sacrifices included the ritual. Okay, I gotta look this back up. Okay, so there's some truth to this about the prisoner of wars, you know, being sacrificed. Okay, okay, okay. Killing of children on top of a mountain uh, or a pyramid to honor Tlaloc, their god of rainfall. Thousands of years later, we have inventions like meteorology and the internet, so you might think that ritual sacrifices would have stopped, but in many parts of the world, they've persisted. In 2007, for example, Nepal's state-run airline was having a lot of issues with one, with one of their Boeing aircraft, and their solution at the time was to sacrifice two goats in front of the plane to appease the sky god and ensure that the plane that had happened too. I mean, sure it did, because airplane 2007. There you go. I mean, sacrificing goats. Don't want goats to die. So, you know, let's not do that. But, I mean, it's no more weird than thinking that a wafer is the flesh of a god that you're eating, right? So had safe passage. Executives were thrilled when the plane managed to take off and land, so I guess it worked. At the time, the story was mostly met with amusement in this country. It was unthinkable for anything like that to happen here, we thought. Sure, we have no room to make fun of them. I mean, uh, they might sacrifice a goat outside of the plane, but we allow people to bring goats and other animals onto the planes as emotional support animals. As a passenger, I would prefer the sacrifice strategy personally, but the, at any rate, you know, people clicked on the story from yeah. Nepal, yeah. Uh, maybe learned something you know, about customs there, had a good chuckle, and then went about their day. In retrospect, that was a mistake, because as it turns out, we were never that far away from hearing our own politicians claim that they too have the there power is. to change the weather with their own offerings to the sky god. Somehow that line has officially been crossed in this country. And recently, a couple days ago, Hillary Clinton posted a tweet blaming Donald Trump supporters for the fact that the temperature has gone up this summer. Here it is, quote, hot enough for you? Thank a MAGA Republican, or better yet, vote them out of office. Now, you might recall that MAGA Republicans is an epithet that uh, appeared out of nowhere about a year ago. A year ago? How long now? Yeah, so here's already an article, 2021, he's 2022, what is a MAGA Republican? Uh, 2020 election was stolen, MAGA Republicans by the number, so that part's incorrect. As far as the thing Hillary Clinton is saying, of course, that's talking about climate change and climate deniers who are primarily upon the Republican side, talking about the MAGA Republicans, which are the more extreme folks, right? So that's, that's really what he's been talking about. And he, the lack of awareness there seems to be ridiculous. Although he, you know, so he's trying to sell it to you, right? So he's doing this thing where it's like, start off with some bad language that you can use primitive, move into how this is done by ancient civilizations who didn't know any better and were dumb and did all these horrible things like sacrifice prisoners of war to tell the future to all the way to modern 2007 Nepal goats, right? But I want to Uh, 2011, right? Here's one. September 11th was really believe that pagans are the abortionists and feminists in case, right? So like, it's not new. Here we go. Evangelicals on gay people. Hurricane Sandy, earthquake and tsunami in Japan, right? Hurricane Joaquin, African fires, South African fires, sorry, Italian earthquake. Yeah, so it's not new. This, uh, and keep in mind, like, what Hillary Clinton is doing is very different than this. What Hillary Clinton is doing is making a slight against folks who actually might be, in part, by policy at least, uh, affecting the terrible weather, right? I mean, all, if you believe a climatologist, at least, so the experts who study climate, uh, then pollution, uh, CO2 gases, runaway kind of uh, processes in, the, in these ways, um, all affect climate change, 
and climate change in particular is making us have some of the hottest on record heat waves that just keep happening. The people who are mostly on the side for like help, you know, following along that path and helping to reduce CO2 and other adventures in fixing the environment are liberals and Democrats. Now there's some of them who probably don't believe in it or follow it or do anything for that either. And then on the flip side is Republicans and to the extreme would be MAGA Republicans. So that's very different than not being able to draw any kind of connection from abortionists to a tsunami or an earthquake or something like that, which again, as we're seeing, still takes place. Um, yeah. So, okay, let's get back to him. When Democratic Party consultants made it up, and already these MAGA Republicans are affecting the weather simply by existing. How are they doing that? One of the articles that Hillary Clinton cites in her tweet was published in Forbes, and uh, the piece reported that, quote, July 4th was Earth's hottest day in over 100,000 years. Now, that's, that's quite a claim, since we've only been able to track temperatures for the past 140 years. According to NASA, quote, there are too few data before 1880 for scientists to estimate average temperatures for the entire planet. That's what NASA said. For the entire planet. Hundreds of years. Our records of temperature using these modern tools go back hundreds of years. However, to look back even further in time before humans were recorded. So here's Smith, the, the Smithsonian. Um, although fossil communities and geological indicators like dropstones tell us if times are relatively warm or cold, or cool, there are coarse interpretations of the environment, right? Uh, let's see. So infrared probes, mercury filled glass tubes for the temperature that gives us an accurate depiction in degrees. Um, our records of temperature using these modern tools go back hundreds of years. However, to look back even further in time for humans were recording the temperature as they experienced outside, we have to study the geological record, the geologic record. Right, so they study ice cores. Um, so in this case, they can't get specific temperatures, but they can generally get like, is it cooler or hotter than it was now? And they can get relative information, right? So the oldest ice glaciers um, are no older than a few million years to get even older temperatures. We can just rely on what we can learn from ice. There we go. So. For measuring temperatures, they can use isotopes. This is starting to get into stuff that I don't understand, but it looks like there's definitely a scientific process. So it's just one of the many, right? Um, things that he's kind of conflating. He's saying, oh, we haven't been able to track temperatures past 1880. Well, maybe that's true. That's a couple hundred years, right? According to the article, but the Smithsonian is saying, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. We can track, generally speaking, if it was at least warmer or cooler than these other things, but tracking these other stuff. So they can get an estimation of what the temperature was like. That would at least tell us, since those days were generally cooler than days that we can track, or that we do know data about, that anything hotter than those, because the scale is going up, makes it hot. Plus, we had more accurate temperature readings in certain parts of the world than we did in others. This is talking about the entire planet. Um, so he's right in a very small way, but wrong in so many other ways, right? He's got to really read between the lines to make this true in a way that gets to the intent he's talking about, which is that we can't determine that it's the hottest time in 100,000 years. Okay, so he's wrong. Says. And even for the past 140 years, it seems highly dubious to assume that the records are accurate enough to confidently declare that we experienced the hottest day in a century, uh, really a century and a half this month. Does anyone think that we actually have a precisely accurate idea of what the temperature was everywhere on the planet on, say, I don't know, August 11th, 1893? 93. I don't know how to read this graph, but it definitely gives us the temperature. We can be pretty confident about it then. 
I mean, this is climate.gov. This is information from NOAA. This is the same stuff he's trying to basically reference. Um, here's a temperature chart for the last 11,000 years. Not sure how much that helps. So yeah, it's getting hotter and hotter every year by almost a degree Celsius at this point. So yeah, pretty much everybody seems to agree that he is wrong. And that actually in 1893, we can track the temperature. I just don't know how to read the chart. So. Okay, let's keep going back. Much less do we have, uh, do we know the global temperature on August 11th, 1893 BC. So suffice it to say, the Forbes piece is it Seems like we have some information, I don't know where they, they got their stuff from, but It looks like people know sort of. Okay, fair point. We don't know the exact temperature on 1893 BC, but we know probably where it ranged. We don't need to know the exact temperature in order to have a good confidence about that to this August 11th is hotter than that August 11th because the range of that was much, didn't include the temperature that was happening now, right? Okay. I think that's all I can say about that. Is not especially strong evidence to support the idea that uh, Trump voters are somehow making it hot during the summer. I already explained that. So they have not even come close to proving that we've had the hottest day in 140 years, much less 100,000 100, years. That's wrong. Um, and so they, they also have not proven that, uh, that this weather is being caused by MAGA Republicans. So there are two things that need to be proved here, it's and they've done none of that. A little facetious. So let's take stock of what's human. happening. This is the kind of thing we often laugh about and then just kind of move on from, but we should really spend some time thinking about this. One of the most prominent Democrats in the country, a former Secretary of State, former presidential candidate, just sincerely blamed her political opponents for making it hot outside. And she did it on the basis of no evidence whatsoever. In fact, she so this is where he now draws this conclusion. So this is a fallacy, right? So he's saying, hey, there's no evidence whatsoever, but we just showed like there's, there's tons of websites, tons of the Smithsonian science, NOAA, uh, tons of climate. So at least for the last 140 years, very accurate information, right? By the degree, by the temperature. So we know that. Um, but then also records that go back further with some science and predictability that proves to be mostly accurate. And then he draws the conclusion that that means no evidence whatsoever. When there's actually a large amount of evidence stating that climate change is real, that it's affecting temperature and weather, um, there may, you know, what the diabolical thing that's going to happen or the world destroying events that are going to happen and when exactly that's all up for debate and there's a lot of ranges and the problem is it's a it's a changing target because we're constantly updating technology but we're also constantly using more technology and energy anyways that's a whole big bag of worms about the predictability about when catastrophe is going to strike but at the very least, for temperatures, the Earth, and it being the hottest in 100,000 years, that's pretty good confidence, uh, data that supports that. Very much so, like almost uh, undeniably so in the past 140 years, because we've had such good record keeping for weather and temperature as time has gone on, and definitely over the past 100 years, right? So like, it's getting better and better and more accurate and more widespread that we can track, but it's also with that new information giving us better and better prediction models for what it was most likely like in the past. But again, no one can say for 100% because here's the problem. If anyone ever tells you something is 100% accurate, true, without possibility of being failed, they're trying to sell you something, they're not a scientist. 
He's trying to tell you there's zero evidence when there's tons of evidence. And yeah, there's a nuanced conversation about what that evidence necessarily means for the human race and how soon it means that. But the simple claim of the hottest weather, hottest day of the weather, that's easy. The pushing it onto mega Republicans is simply policy talk, right? The policies that a Hillary Clinton supports, at least during her presidential campaign and now, are things that get declined or pushed back against by the most conservative members of our voting populace who have been called MAGA Republicans. And not just in the past year from this video, this is July 27th, 2023, but much further than that, as we saw in that news article that was dated in 2021. But wouldn't it be much earlier than that because it came about from the group of people who support Donald Trump as if he was the 2020 president-elect with the real president today. Those people have now been nicknamed the mega, make America great again, Republicans. Okay? Just a nickname for a group of people that existed far earlier than that. He knows this. We all know this. He's doing a lot of red herring type of arguments. Okay. She lied about what little evidence she did present. Now, on some level, we're used to the climate change hysteria and the constant claims that the world is ending, so this might not seem like anything new. But what makes this so especially insane is that she's claiming that not only does human activity change the weather, but that a relatively small group of humans can bring about substantial changes in the weather in the span of just a few years. So this is not just... That was uh, claim. Human activity has caused global temperatures to rise by two degrees in 150 years or, or whatever, you know. This is, I mean, it could be the claim we're having a devastating heat wave mind, because of what my political opponents did last Tuesday. We are in full-on primitive superstition territory here. Blaming your enemies for a heat wave is the kind of thing that you'd expect to hear from a, a tribal chieftain in a loincloth in the Amazon somewhere. See, now he's, he's full-circled it, right? He's brought it back to the ridiculousness of the initial conversations about people from thousands of thousands of years ago. But people who are probably watching this show and liking it just 10 years ago were also blaming weather events on abortionists, feminists, homosexuals, the devil is coming, all that sort of stuff. That is superstitious, if anything, just like what he's talking about. That all said, that isn't the point of the tweet, uh, most likely, right? As we've gone over in Agna. So we're... Anyways, we're going to finish this. Though I think even most of them are too advanced at this point to believe in that sort of thing. But that's the level of science that senior Democrats are now pushing. What comes next? In every other culture that's gone down this path, ritual sacrifice is what comes next. Hillary Clinton's already identified the problem. It's predominantly middle-class Americans who voted the wrong way in the last election. They held too many cookouts. They drove trucks that were too big. Therefore, they're making it hot outside, and they need to pay. That's what she believes. How long before Hillary suggests building a giant pyramid and cutting the... So, he, if he's not smarter than this, his writers are smarter than this. So, this is intentional, right? We all know this. He's trying to push and dig at folks. He's using an icon of, like, Hillary Clinton, which I don't really care about. Um, blaming all this, these things on superstitious thinking because you can't 100% for sure certain say that climate change causes these issues. Um, but that's science, right? Science doesn't make 100% claims like we went over. The, this is, if someone was watching this and thinking, wow, this is a really good argument, I don't know that that really hurt um, something inside, right? Because they didn't stop to look up anything he said, probably, but they definitely agreed that he had looked up everything he's saying, right? So it must be true, must, must be true, even though there's tons of science that supports the hottest day kind of conversation um, based on the sciences that he quoted, meteorology, climate, 
Scientologists. All the it's, heart out of a middle-aged white guy in a red hat in order to appease Mother, Mother Earth. Or maybe just for fun. What's really alarming is that it's not just Hillary Clinton who thinks this way. The rest of the party and the media has been building to this conclusion for a long time. They're not just blaming human activity for the weather. They're blaming very recent and isolated human activity for the weather. This kind of thinking took off sometime around 2018 when the Climate Institute warned that people are changing the weather currently actively just by running their air conditioning units. The analysts determined that, quote, using and producing air conditioning equipment exacerbates climate change. And they proposed that in lieu of using air conditioning, you know, people wear short sleeves and rely on blinds and curtains more often. Otherwise, they said the climate will change. And of course, the climate did change because climates always change because that's what climates do. Wow. The same year, the Washington Post ran an op-ed so entitled, smart. Another hurricane is about to batter our coast. Trump is complete. So the reason why AC is called out, right, is because AC, uh, for anyone who has solar, by the way, which I don't, or if you track your electricity use um, very regularly, you'll notice, you just have to look at your monthly bill, when AC is running, there's a lot of electricity used, right? It's pretty much the number one regularly used electrical device that uses a lot of wattage. So if it's between 71 and 72 degrees or 72 and 73 degrees Fahrenheit in your house and you want to keep it there, but maybe it's a little too warm for you that day, why not wear short sleeves or wear shorts or something like that to cool off? You could save electricity, which saves you money, but you could also help to save the environment because all the electricity we produce, well, the vast majority of electricity we produce is coal, right? Right. So coal generated between 19.5, 30% of the electricity at the utility scale facility in the United States, which needs to change. Um, we want to get that down. It's not only just because it's bad for the environment, bad for the air, but even something like nuclear, right, can produce, I want to say it's somewhere between like one and to 2.5 million times the amount of electricity per ton of material, right? So it's just way more efficient. Um, I don't need air conditioning and neither do you. Greenery surrounding the windows, block direct sunlight, that helps. That's why people like trees around their house, right? Passive cooling. Shade, building material, strategic ventilation can be used to all the same home. So passive cooling, I put blinds in my, I didn't have air conditioning when I first moved into this house. I put blinds up to stay a lot cooler. Uh, I did need to end up having to get AC, but hey, I still don't try and run it all the time or at the lowest setting. Strain energy systems. Yeah, we have tons of stuff. So they require a lot of energy to run, accounting for about 6% of all the electricity used in the United States. Yeah. So that's, that's why. Okay. It's climate change. That's what climates do, being complicit in a solar eclipse. So it took just a year after he came into office for the Washington Post to blame Trump for bad weather. Then two months before the last presidential election, as well. I mean, I can't say for sure the Washington Post has been doing this for a long time, but I was a kid in the 1980s and People were talking about climate change and pollution and all those sorts of things then. So it's not new and it's not just the one administration, uh, but when you have um, administrations who might be more inclined to reduce uh, pollution based recommendations and others that are pro having more strict pollution based, you know, uh, regulations. That might be what they were talking about or what they're talking about in this particular article. But he seems to think like it's suddenly new. Like suddenly people are talking about this. 
clearly it's not. You just have to be older than, I don't know, four to know that. Because you can remember back to that time. Anyways. Wildfires spread across California. Joe Biden endorsed that position as totally deranged as it is. Uh, watch. The Defense Department reported that climate change is a direct threat to more than two thirds of the military's operationally critical installations. That's what the military warned him. And this could well be, this well could be a conservative estimate. Donald Trump's climate denial may not have caused these fires and record floods and record hurricanes, but if he gets a second term, these hellish events will continue to become more common, more devastating, and more deadly. If Trump gets a second term, Biden said, then, quote, these hellish events will continue to become more common, more devastating, and more deadly. In other words, we'll have more hurricanes, wildfires, and floods, uh, and they'll be more dangerous if Donald Trump is in office for four years instead of Joe Biden. That's what he's saying. And that was Joe Biden in 2020. Has anyone followed up with him on that pledge now that he's been in office for several years? Has he declared victory over bad weather? Remember, he promised to cure cancer. I think cancer is still around, last I checked. Uh, bad weather. We're still. First time I've seen that. I heard that one. But, hmm. Former Vice President Joe Biden gets elected in 2020 is curing cancer. At least that's what the presidential hopeful promised at a campaign stop. I promise you, if I'm elected, you're going to see the single most important thing that changes America. Biden knows we're going to cure cancer. Let's see. I mean, maybe he did. Uh, okay. So President Biden says he's ended cancer as we know it. TikTok post said, so it's basically there. If you could do anything at all, Joe, what would you do? I said, I'd cure cancer. And they looked at me like, why cancer? Because no one thinks we can. That's why. And we can. We can end cancer as we know it. So if there's one thing you could do, if you could do anything at all. Okay. So that's wrong. He's being like TikToked. Okay. Keep going. Still having bad weather. In fact, he and his allies, like Hillary Clinton, are now that he's been in office for several years, has he declared victory over bad weather? Remember, he promised to cure cancer. I think cancer is still around, last I checked. Uh, bad weather, we're still, ha still having bad weather. In fact, he and his allies, like Hillary Clinton, are actually telling us that the weather has only gotten worse. That's what they are telling us. He promised in 2020 that if Trump is not voted into office, then the weather will get better. It's, it's going to get worse sure. if Trump is voted into office, which would lead us to believe that if he's not, the weather will get better. Now they're telling us that... The well, the opposite isn't always true. That's a logical fallacy, though. We can probably agree that what he was meaning was if Trump is in office, it's just going to exaggeratedly get worse because there would be no safeguards against policymakers who just want to turn off all the regulations. That's easy to infer but that said presidents and people running for president say a lot of silly stuff about promises when some a lot of times it's not even within their purview of powers uh, we see that every single campaign cycle on both parties including from donald trump the man who still probably holds the record for the most number of lies that ever washington post saw but the weather's only getting worse which means I guess we can blame Joe Biden for that. Every wildfire, every hurricane is Joe Biden's fault. That's the precedent they've set. Oh no, now they say, well, the only way to keep the weather from continuing to get worse is to keep voting for them. This is the scam. And of course, none of it is remotely true. Here's the data on global annual deaths from natural disasters, including wildfires, volcanoes, extreme temperatures, droughts, earthquakes, floods. Uh, it covers the 1990s all the way to the 2010s. And uh, if you look at a chart, you can notice how, how things are much safer now by every me metric, in fact. But you never hear about this. Instead, you're told that natural disasters are getting more common and more deadly. Currently, they're reporting that the fires in Canada are historic. They said the same thing about the California uh, fires a, a few years ago. In fact, every time there's a wildfire now, it seems like it's historic. This has never happened before. The world has never seen anything like this. 
The truth is that wildfires used to be in order of magnitude worse than they are now. Ever hear about the, uh, the great Midwest wildfires of 1871? Probably not. Somehow it's never mentioned. And that's strange because according to the... Here we go. So we'll look at the EPA. So number of fires. They've been kind of steady. Area burned has gone up over time. So that's the severity. So severity of wildfires is increasing, but frequency is not. Then wildfire damage seems to be going up. There's a trend there. Uh, the high amount, eh, more or less the same. Moderate amounts been kind of up and down. But the low and unburdened to low is getting higher for sure. Burned area by state. Okay, that's interesting, but it doesn't really help. So this means it's going up from 2001 to 2022. Okay, well that makes sense throughout the year. Okay. Not sure what this one's showing us. But what it seems to be indicating is that frequency of fires hasn't really gone up per year, but that the severity of them has. National Weather Service, it was the deadliest series of wildfires in American history. Those fires killed thousands of people, destroyed millions of acres. How did that happen? How did it happen more than a, a century before the rise of the MAGA Republicans who are causing all of this? Oh my God. It's not that wildfires never occurred before. It's that again, it's getting worse on a more regular basis. So could there have been a worse fire in the past? Yes, but the probably next top eight likely happened relatively recently, right in the top 10 fires of all time. So what he's doing, he, he's very, these aren't even good logical fallacies. Like these are just, if someone's just not thinking while they're watching this video, right? That's his target audience. Are MAGA Republicans able to control the weather in the past too? How far does their sorcery reach? I guess we'll have to ask Hillary Clinton about that. But let's be charitable for a second. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, that none of these outlets and politicians are lying. Let's pretend that we are in a climate emergency and everybody's about to burn up and die. Okay, let's just pretend that for a moment. Well, if that's the case, you'd think Hillary Clinton would be tweeting nonstop about China. You'd think that Joe Biden would be imposing sanctions. China's carbon emissions are more than double America's. In fact, China emits more carbon than every developed nation on the planet combined. Have they done anything to curb these emissions? I don't know if that's true. Now, keep in mind, China is also the largest amount of, largest population, right? So they're going to definitely be high. Well, <laughs> here's an interesting world, right? Um... United States. Okay, is that another China? So here's the world, right? China is at 11.47 billion tons. United States is at 5.01, which you can see we're going down. China is going up. Certainly, that's something to be talked about, but there's no sanction we can put on China to stop them from, you know, creating emissions. Now, we can leverage a lot of other things, um, but right now, what I would say is he's falsifying data again. Emissions that are, that are killing everybody? I mean, this is an act of war. It's, it's, if carbon emissions are causing wildfires and hurricanes in the United States, then this is like an act of war by China against the United States. 
So what is uh, Joe Biden doing about it? I mean, China is building the equivalent of two large... I wonder if there is something. Look at this. With... This was before his um, post. So it's definitely happening. There's growing tensions, US you know, China trying to push and leverage. So yeah, like what is he doing? All he'd have to do is look it up. And that's the first article. Um, pathway for China to peak emissions by 2025. It's tougher stance on China, massive pace. I mean, there's China and U.S. pledge climate change commitment. I just did a search. What is Biden doing about China emissions? His question. Large coal plants every week. This year, China's carbon emissions have already set a new record. But Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden don't seem concerned. Instead, they're demanding that you they give do. up your gas stove and vote for them or else. They leave China alone in the meantime. Now, we've seen this before. Remember when uh, the left went... So this is... He's just going off of what has just been shown to be false data. So either he's just not researching, he's just talking out of his, you know, pie hole, um, or he's getting his news still from TikTok, or he's intentionally lying to his audience, which might be the right one, right? Like... This seems bizarre that no one just looks up what he's saying. Went on a campaign against plastic straws a few years ago, and they were warning that our plastic straws are polluting the ocean and killing the sea turtles. And that's the whole reason why when you go somewhere now, you get those flimsy paper straws that uh, dissolve in your soda the moment you try to use them. Well, that's a sacrifice we got to make to keep the sea turtles healthy. Well, what they refuse to mention is that many Asian countries dump their trash directly into their rivers, sending millions of tons of garbage, straws included, floating out into the ocean in a giant conveyor belt-like system every year. Now we're seeing this same pattern play out with carbon emissions. Except in this case, our leader... So they didn't fail to say that. I remember that even being the topic of a Captain Planet episode. So like if, if it reaches Captain Planet, like everybody should know that places in the world, including the United States, just dump pollutants. But just because other people are doing it doesn't mean you should. I mean, that, there was that question when I was a kid all the time, which was really dumb, but it's maybe Matt Walsh needs this. Like, if everyone else was jumping off a bridge, would you? That's what he seems to be like leaning on. Like, oh, all these other people are doing this, so we should too. Well, we have an opportunity to reduce those things. We're in a relatively wealthy country. We can just not use straws because we clean glasses, right? So there's lots of things that we can do to, in small ways, impact the negative approach to give us more time to help reduce, um, even if in the grand scheme of things, just that one straw you don't take today doesn't matter. It's like an investment. You put a dollar in the bank account today and it's worth a lot more down the road, right? Keep adding dollars every single day. You will get a lot of money in not such a long period of time. It'll have a much more robust impact. Even if some other person is able to put $100 in the bank account, their bank account every day, yeah, your money won't mean much compared to theirs, but it'll still mean a lot more than the money you initially started off with that you wouldn't save because you just burned it at a campfire. Uh, our leaders are the ones who enabled China's rise of the, as the world's largest polluter. 20 years ago, Bill Clinton approved the U.S.-China trade agreement and uh, China's entrance into the World Trade Organization. He said that more trade with China would benefit Americans. He promised that it would not crush the U.S. manufacturing sector. Quite the opposite. Quote, we'll be able to export products without exporting jobs, he promised. And how has that worked out exactly? But they refuse to take any responsibility for their role in creating the single greatest polluter on the planet. Someone who, by their logic and by their argument, is, is killing the planet and all of us.
about 2060. Inside climate news. Okay, so this is basically the quote that he just said. So I'm wondering. So generally it looks like people agree that, you know, Clinton opened the doors, but over the last 20 years, people just sort of sat back, let it happen. So here, yeah, 2019, China had been nearly two and a half times more than the United States, right? That's kind of what we saw. Uh, it's mostly coal and other power production. Okay. Um, yeah. Clinton allowed it through, but there's been things been... Things have been being looked at since then. The Clintons and the rest of their party have to dis have displayed no self-reflection or regret whatsoever about what they did. That's because they don't regret it. They don't care about carbon emissions. And you know what? They don't really think that MAGA Republicans, whoever those are, are actively making it hot in the summer. At least the leftists in charge don't buy that stuff. It's all fake. Okay, they care about power. To the point that Hillary Clinton is now babbling like an Aztec shaman. Except the Aztec shaman would at least acknowledge that he's practicing religion, not science. We are ruled by people who can't tell the difference. Hillary Clinton wasn't doing science or religion. She was doing now let's get to our five headlines. Daily Wire reports lawmakers held an explosive hearing on Wednesday on the topic of UFOs and things got, well, weird. Appearing before the House Oversight Committees. Let's go to... I will do the UFO stuff on another day. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.